Well, Booktube, it's time to make a video. It is 8.05 at night on December the 30th, 2016, here in the Midwest by the Great Lakes. I'm sitting here reading uh, tonight, I was reading The Feud, Vermeer Nabokov. Edmund, Edmund Wilson, The End of a Beautiful Friendship by Alex Beam. I've been reading this this evening, uh, looking at these letters that I have in my library, the Negatov Wilson letters, 1940 to 1971, edited by Simon Karolinski. I found out in reading this tonight that there was another edition of this was re- uh, an expanded edition came out in 1990, and I ordered it tonight, uh, used from Amazon. It has more letters, and I got this at a used book sale a number of years ago for my uh, Nabokov and Wilson collection. I collect uh, books and biographies and letters and diaries by both of these men, uh, Edmund Wilson and Valmer. Never cough. So, yeah, I was gonna read this after I finished this. I read, the, I finished *Bear: The Life and Times of Augustus Osley Stanley III* by Robert Greenfield. As I mentioned, that Robert Greenfield did a uh, he did a biography on uh, Timothy Leary that I read a number of years ago. So I finished this. And so I've been reading this. I also uh, read today some more of this book. I said I was going to continue reading it. I probably still read it. I haven't put it down in the lower level in the main library. Partisans, Marriage, Politics, and Betrayal Among the New York Intellectuals by David Lin 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 Leskin. It goes into Mary McCarthy, Edmund Wilson, Philip Rav. Robert Lowell, Jean Stat Stanford, Elizabeth Hardwick, Hannah Hardnett, Alan Tate, Caroline Corden, and Diane Trilling. It goes into these lives of little biographical sketches. They're all kind of were friends and married to one another. Robert Lowell was married to Jean Stafford. Evan Wilson was married for a while to Mary McCarthy. So yeah, I was reading this today. I, I really have been enjoying this and I want to keep reading it. So besides that, I've still been reading uh, Lu uh, Pursuit of the Prodigal by Louis Akaklos. I read this uh, last couple of days. Uh, says Pursuit of the, the Prodigal, a novel of the rich and the desperate. It says here, Pursuit of the, of the Prodigal is an explosive novel of a socially proper marriage on the rocks. There's a story of a man, a rebel, who breaks away from his wife and wealth to find himself obsessed with the life he cannot have and a woman he should not possess. I really like this. I, I was thinking about this today, why I like novels like this and why I can't get into the novels I was mentioning, like uh, Miss Laid and Neil Zink. Uh, why, why do I find these things different? Why, what it, why do I like this more than this? It's because I think when I was growing up, when I first started reading seriously, I read novels that had plots, characters, stories, uh, it had some kind of narrative to it. When you read things like this, there's no really character development. There's no plot, there's no story, there's no flow. It's just, it's like a bunch of fragments. There's no sense of unity or wholeness. It's just, it's like, it's like listening to a stand-up comedian and some hipster nightclub telling you their observations on modern life, sex, 
lesbianism, homosexuality, drugs, politics, the environment. It's just like a, a big, huge satirical skit. And whereas this has a story, it has characters, it has, I suppose I, I would say that I was always, I, I think I've mentioned a long time ago that one of my favorite novels when I was a young person was The American Tragedy by Theodore Dreiser. I, I suppose I like American realism. Uh, those are the novels I've, that I like, uh, like I mentioned Don Updike, the Rabbit novels, and, and uh, Norman Mailer, and, and people like that, and so I suppose that's where I, gravi I gravitate towards more. Now I do read modernism, I mean I do read postmodern novels, I've read three of them this month, but I don't really find them satisfying. Uh, um, so I just want to mention that. So I was reading this today, and like I said, I, I wanted to finish Mislaid by Neil Zink. So I read this today. I'm almost done with this. I got in the mail a book, a new book that just came out. It's called uh, Those Who Know Me. I'm into art, art history, uh, Amer uh History of Modern Art, and I got this book today. It's a new book. It's called The Art of a Rivalry, Four Friendships, Betrayals, and Breakthroughs in Modern Art by Sebastian Simi. This is on uh, Matisse, Picasso, Manet, Degas, Pollock, de Kooning, uh, Freud, Freud or, and Bacon on these uh, writers and how their rivalries between Pollock and de Kooning, how it affected development of their art. So I got that in the mail today and look forward to reading it. Uh, I went to a thrift store yesterday and I found this book which I have already in my library but I got it for 50 cents and I'll take it to the library used bookstore tomorrow when I volunteer. This is by that Portuguese writer that I've mentioned. Uh, Jose, Jose, Jose Sac, um, Marco. This is his novel, uh, All the Names. This is translated out of Portuguese by Margaret Joel Costa. And I found a volume of the complete poems of Elizabeth Bishop from 1927 to 1979. I have in my pre-order in Amazon a biography of Elizabeth Bishop coming out in the spring. Uh, can't remember off the top of my head who's writing the biography. But she was uh, friends with the po poet Robert Lowell. And uh, so I got this. I got this in the mail. I, I told you I wanted to col col complete my collection of the novels of Lawrence Norfolk. This is his last one. He's written four novels. This is the his most current one, or I think it's the most current one. John Saturnell's a novel. Oh, John Saturnell's Feast by Lawrence Norfolk. I got that in the mail. Add it to my are the three novels I have by him I wanted to to my collection. Also I found this little slim volume, it's a Barnes and Noble on the French painter Renoir. Uh, Renoir? Was it? I can't pronounce it, my mind just went blank. Anyway, this is Renoir, this is a picture of him. I have other books by him other books of his paintings and it was only like you know 50 cents uh yeah i like his paintings so you know things like that oh you know things like that it's only 50 cents so i got that 
So that's what I got at thrift store. This is what I got in the mail. I got these in the mail this week. I got some books coming in the mail maybe tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is Saturday. I volunteer at the library used bookstore from 10 to 1 tomorrow. As far as what I've been reading in the morning for devotions, I'm still reading The Christian's Only Com Comfort in Life and Death, an exposition of Heidelberg Catechism by Volume 1 by Theodore Vandergrew, who was born in 1705 and 1784. This is just translated out of Dutch by a guy named Bartel Ashout. So I remember reading that. As far as my diary, I ended on page today. I ended on page 1057. Tomorrow is the last day of the year 2016. Maybe I'll still be alive tomorrow. Never know. So that's what's going on in my book world. That's what I got in the mail. That's what I'm reading. That's what I got at thrift stores. Like I said, I you read these two different things and I think the reason why I'm more attracted to novels like this it goes back to my youth, what I grew up reading. I grew up reading novels and uh, maybe it's a generation. I'm, this is not too bad, but it's not satisfying as much as reading this or reading a novel by John O'Hare or a novel by Philip Roth or a novel by John Updike or Joyce Carol Oates or even like Thomas Wolfe or Norman Mailer or something like that. So anyway, I hope you have a good new year and uh, I might make a video tomorrow night when I put away my diaries. And I thought about filming my whole year of my diaries, the, di the year of 2016. And so, uh, yeah, I do hope you have a good New Year's and a good weekend. And until next time, bye.